Hey guys, welcome to my video on the power rule. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I already made a couple of these a while back to help people figure out marginal costs and marginal revenues. Well, now I am making one to help with marginal utilities. It's going to be the same calculus, so if you already learned it, don't waste your time. But the power rule applies to functions with this form. f of x equals a times x to the b, the power function. a can be any numbers, b can be any number, except for zero. Uh, and then it's a power function. If your function has this shape, this form, then it's easy to find its rate of change or its derivative. So this is the derivative. It reads as df dx. And df dx is equal to a times b times x to the b minus 1. That equation, the derivative of f, df dx, tells you how fast f is changing at any level of x. And we did two things to transform it. One, we brought the exponent down and multiplied it by the a. And then two, we subtracted one from the exponent. So if f is ax to the b, df dx is abx to the b minus one. Other forms of writing this, df dx, or your derivative of x, can be called f prime of x, or f sub one of x. It's all the same thing. Note, the power rule is irrelevant when b equals 0. When b equals 0, f of x is just a, and its derivative will always be 0. Okay, power rule. We're going to derive marginal utility from this function. u of q equals 10q to the 0.5, or 10 square root of q, whichever way you prefer. So it looks something like this. Can we find its rate of change? Can we find its slope? Now, it's not... You might be thinking, like, no, it's not a straight line. Well, there's a slope at every point. It just, the slope depends on q. So let's use our power form. f is u. Utility function is your f. x is q. a is 10. b is 0.5. With all that, then u of q equals 10 times q to the 0.5 is the same as f of x equals a times x to the b. So your marginal utility with respect to q, mu sub q, or du dq, is equal to a times b times q to the b minus 1, which is 10 times 0.5 times q to the 0.5 minus 1, which is 5 times q to the negative 0.5. And if you like to change your exponents like I do, I never like to leave negatives. A negative exponent, you can just put it in the denominator with a positive number. This is 5 over the square root of q. I think I made another video at some point about exponent rules. You can search my channel for it and you'll find it there. Uh, if you're not sure like what the heck I just did. So I could evaluate the marginal utility of with respect to q at a few different points. Marginal utility at q equals 1. 5 over the square root of q. It's just 5 over 1. It's just 5. And that's the slope of this curve at q equals 1. That's what it's giving us. It's giving us a rate of change or a slope. Change in utility over change in quantity. It's a slope. Marginal utility at 4 is 5 over root 4. Is 5 over 2 is 2.5. That's a slope at the quantity of 4. What about at q equals 9? 5 over the square root of 9 5 over 3 is 1.6s. We can calculate the slope at any point along that curve. And you'll see that the farther you increase your q, the lower the slope will be. It'll get flatter and flatter. Okay, now let's get to something else that's going to haunt us at some point. Maybe not so much in the utility functions, but later. Let's talk about additively separable functions. These are functions where you can break them into pieces, where f of x is equal to g of x plus h of x. You can add them separately, then df dx is equal to dg dx plus dh of x. If you can add them separately, you can add their derivatives separately. f prime of x equals g prime of x plus h prime of x. That is the exact same statement as the df dx, dg dx, dh dx statement. The fact that we can add them separately means we can apply the power rule in even more settings. 
I could have a utility function that looks like this. This is a bigger, more complex function. Side so note, it also violates our diminishing marginal utility assumption, but let's ignore that for now. Utility is equal to five plus 10Q plus two Q squared. Well, you can break this into functions. There's a G of Q, which is just five. There's an H of Q, which is 10Q. There's a, an I of Q, which is two Q squared. I've broken it into additively separable pieces. So the big F of Q is equal to G of Q plus H of Q plus I of Q, and that's our utility function. If we do this, the derivative of the utility function with respect to Q is the derivative of each of those pieces added separately. dg dq plus dh dq plus di dq is du dq. Okay, so that means we have to take the derivative of each of those small sub functions separately. Well, du dq is going to be zero for the first piece, because remember, the derivative of a constant number will always be zero. Its rate of change is zero. Okay, so there's the first piece. Second piece, dh dq. Give me 10. And then bring your exponent on the q down. It's just one times q to the one minus one. Is your full power rule approach to it. Uh, and for your i function, two times two, we brought the exponent down, times q to the two minus one. Let's simplify this and see what we get. u dq is equal to zero plus 10. And down the one is one. q to the one minus one is q to the zero. And anything raised to the zeroth power is just one. So 10 times one is one. Plus four q. Two times two is four. Two minus one is one. And q to the one is q. So I am able to look at this utility function and solve for its marginal utility, which is just 10 plus 4q. Its slope will depend on where you are, what q. That's all the marginal utility is telling you. It's telling you a slope. In the case of nonlinear functions, the slope depends on q. So here's an example for you to try in your own time. u of q equals 20 plus 2q plus 10 times the square root of q. Pause the computer and try to solve it, because I'm not going to. And your answer for the marginal utility is 0 plus 2 plus 5 over square root of q. Okay. What if we do more dimensions? Sometimes our utility function is a dependent on four goods, sorry, on two goods instead of one. Or even more goods. It can be n. I have a more heavy calculus video elsewhere where I do an n-dimensional Cobb-Douglas utility function and solve for the demand for each variable. Uh, but in this case, we're going to take this very famous form where the utility function is a times x to the b times y to the c. We call this the Cobb-Douglas form. Very common. We use it for utility functions. We use it for production functions. We can use it for more stuff. It's not the only function we can use, but it's a very common one. It gives us a lot of the traits we're looking for, and it leads to some relatively doable math. Now, to get marginal utilities, we're going to have to rely heavily on ceteris paribus. Ceteris paribus means you leave everything else equal. Your marginal utility of x is equal to the change in utility over the change in x, or how much does our unit of x increase utility? if y stays constant. We have to hold y the same. We have to do ceteris paribus in order to solve for a marginal utility in this case, because the level of y could mess you up. So we hold y constant and we can solve for mux. Similarly for muy, how much does our unit of y increase u if x stays constant? Either way, we're gonna use ceteris paribus. And if we do, we can actually keep using the power function, even though this equation is a lot uglier. So a note on marginal utilities. Marginal utility of x, or du dx, can also be called u1 of x and y. 
and it's how much does another unit of x increase if y stays constant? The marginal utility of y, or du dy, or u sub 2 of xy, is how much does another unit of y increase u if x stays constant? A note about these 1s and 2s over here. The u sub 1, this 1 down here, is referencing the fact that we're taking the derivative with respect to the first argument, x. The u sub 2 means we're taking the derivative with respect to the second argument, or y. That's what that means. So let's, let's solve for some of these. Let's say we've got this Cobb-Douglas utility function. And let's give it special specific values. A equals 5. X is the quantity of good X. B is 0.25. Y is the quantity of good Y. C is 0.75. We've given all of it some sort of meaning now. It's a utility function. U of X and Y is equal to 5. X to the 0.25. Y to the 0.75. Can we solve for both marginal utility of x and marginal utility of y using the power rule? So let's see what we can do. We need to hold y constant to solve for the marginal utility of x. And so let's rearrange this. It might help us to think about it a bit. I'm going to take this utility function. I'm going to move the x term towards the end. It does not change the value of the function at all, and you don't have to do it. It might just help you to think about it because we can group 5 times y to the 0.75 separately from x to the 0.25. Then we can look at our utility function as an a times x to the b, where a is 5y to the 0.75, x is x, and b is 0.25. Now, the only reason that we can do that with a is because we're holding y constant. We're doing ceteris paribus. Your marginal utility of good x is 0.25 times the 5. So we're multiplying our a and our b. Here's the rest of a, y to the 0.75. That's the a times b term that goes out in front. Times x to the b minus 1, or 0.25 minus 1. Let's combine some like terms, and you get this. Uh, if you're wondering why x is in the denominator, remember x to the 0.25 minus 1 is x to the negative 0.75. I don't like negatives, so I put them in the denominator so they can be positive. The marginal utility of good x, with Cobb-Douglas utility and these parameter values, is 1.25 times y to the 0.75 over x to the 0.75, which you could rewrite as being 1.25 times y over x to the 0.75. Okay, let's see if we can solve for the marginal utility of good y. Same idea, we're gonna keep relying on ceteris paribus, only now we're gonna hold x con constant. So utility function, we don't need to rearrange it because y is already separated. We can bracket off the 5x to the 0.25 and hold all that constant. Our utility function has the power form, where a is 5 times x to the 0.25, b is 0.75, so your marginal utility of good y is 0.75 times 5x to the 0.25, that's b times a, times y to the 0.75 minus 1, which comes out to be 3.75 times x to the 0.25 divided by y to the 0.25, which comes out to 3.75 times x over y to the 0.25. Now, there are rules about Cobb-Douglas. There are shortcuts you can take. I'm going to leave that to you to find them. I've showed you how to use the power rule to get your marginal utilities out of it. And I hope it was helpful to you. If not, maybe try one of the other videos. Maybe try something else. Maybe try a math teacher instead of an econ teacher because, you know, they teach this more often. Uh, but anyway... Thanks for watching, guys. I hope it was useful. Good luck and happy econing.